Is it recording? Can't tell. Okay. All right. So welcome to our third class of Music in May. I'm glad y'all are here. And um, as you know, we just talk about different topics from class to class. And last week, uh, someone mentioned about uh, shape note and sacred harp singing and wanted us to talk about this. And so I thought, well, this would be great. So um, that's what we're going to do. And I hope that you will be as lively as you always are uh, for these classes. Hi, Francis. Good hey. to see you. Welcome. Thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> yes. So anyway, um, a couple of things. Um, it's, it's, it's a little bit confusing when you talk about the sacred harp singing and shape notes singing. And, and so I just want you to talk to you a little bit about the difference. So when we talk about shape notes, it is a, it's a musical notation to help congregations and other kind of groups to learn how to sight sing. So um, shapes were added to the note heads in the music to have singers find pitches without using key signatures. So Marissa is going to load up the first example. But before she does that, I'm going to show you for those, I don't want to assume anything, but this is what, you know, a key signature is. You have the clef, and then you have, uh, uh, it could have no flats or no sharps. This is a flat, but this tells you that every time you see a B flat or a B, you flat it. So this is what a key signature is. And there's one, uh, of course, for sharps. So this was a way to simplify people who didn't know music, you know, we're not learning in that. So Marissa's going to show you uh, example one. All right, so as you can see, it, it's a C major scale, uh, an octave, but it starts with a, a fa. So this is a system, it's called the four uh, notes, shape notes. So you can see the fa is a triangle. The so is what they called oval. The la is a square, although some sources call them rectangles. I guess it just depends on the shape. And then you have fa, which is, of course, the same thing. It's a triangle. And then you have the so again, which is an oval, a la, the square. And the mi is a diamond, OK? And then back to fa. So basically, you just have four separate notes, fa, fa, so, la, and then mi. And so that was a way just to simplify it, to help people, to teach them how to sing. So this, interestingly enough, this notation was not introduced in America, but it was introduced in England in the late 18th century. But it became extremely popular as a teaching method in American singing schools. So American singing schools, they began in New England in the early 1700s as a way to teach congregations how to read music. And then, then of course, as, as often happens, uh, some arguments ensued. So some debates uh, occurred over whether congregations should be heard audibly. I found that kind of interesting because right now in this uh, COVID-19 um, era we're living in. I so miss congregations and I was uh, singing. I would love nothing more than to hear y'all sing. So they were, they argued over that and they argued over whether or not what, what should be sung. So should it just be uh, Psalms, the Psalms of David or, or more, you know, some uh, other scripture in the Bible. But anyway, and then, but the, the main contribution controversy in New England was about regular singing, which is what before they had singing schools, which is more or less, you would line it out. Like I would go, amazing grace, and then you would sing it, you know, back and forth, kind of line out. Or uh, that, that was the usual way, or the regular singing, which is singing by reading, reading the notes. And that's what the system was devised to help. Eventually, um, it, 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 came down to the regular way of reading the notes and not, not the usual way of just by rote. So, um, Marissa, you can take that one down. So just remember, shape note is all about the notation, okay? 
So then when we talk about sacred harp singing, um, it is a tradition of sacred singing that has been used for over two centuries. And it started, of course, in New England, but was widely used in the American South and continues to this day. I think we talked last week about how many, um, we've all uh, been a part of some of the um, forums where they, we've had some sacred singing, sacred harp singing. So the name of Sacred Heart comes from a tune book, which is called The Sacred Heart. And it was published in uh, 1844. Marissa, can you show that uh, title page? And it was used widely. So can you read it? Can y'all see that? Yeah? Yes. I love the line, nearly 100 pieces. Not quite 100, but nearly 100 pieces, never before published. Um, so anyway, uh, this was uh, the tune book of the day. And in this tune book, uh, they would have hymns, tunes, and they would be in four parts. So Marissa, if you would show us uh, that next uh, example. All right, so this of course is Amazing Grace. So you have the treble, you have the alto, and the tenor, and the bass. So uh, the tune is uh, usually, it's in the tenor. Do you see that? Maybe you can't, but there it is, Marissa, yeah. That's where the tune is. And so then the harmony, of course, is provided by the soprano, alto, and uh, bass. This is just the first phrase. What, uh, what I was, when I talked to Adam and Sophie, uh, what I was trying to figure out was uh, a lot of the hymn tunes were in the, um, these tune books, shape note books. But I, I wondered about, what, did they originally come from the shape note books or did they adopt these tunes and then turn them into shape notes just to teach congregations? My guess is the latter, but I would be real curious um, if, uh, any uh, tune originated from the shape note tradition. Uh, Marissa mentioned earlier that this would be a great, or there probably is a dissertation out there that someone's written on it. But, you know, I'm a novice at this and I'm learning it as I go. But you can see the shapes, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. And typical like of English hymnals, if you notice, uh, not everybody gets the words. In, in the 1982, we're, we're, we're lucky to get all the words. Uh, in the, in, um, or in, when we sing choral music, it's right under your part. But um, in England, uh, right now, you'll, you'll have the tune, and maybe even four parts singing, but then you'll just have the words down here. So that's a little bit similar, but not quite. All right, so in our hymnal, in the 1982 hymnal, we have several hymns that were published in shape note tune books. Um, and I looked in the uh, appendix and a rough guess, you know, we have about 20 hymns that, um, that we have in our 1982 hymnal. So it's not an exhaustive list, but they came from Kentucky Harmony, the Sacred Harp, the Southern Harmony, Supplement to Kentucky Harmony and Virginia Harmony. So there are m many, many, many uh, tune books out there, but you know, we do have some. And so some of them that were in these tune books were How Firm a Foundation and What Wondrous Love Is This, Amazing Grace, and Holy Manna. Do y'all know what Holy Manna is? Y'all know the tune? We sing that a lot to um, a different text or something. Mm -hmm. It's not in our 1982 hymnal. Well, it is, in a, I guess, in another text. But we've used it from this text that's in wonder, love, and praise. So, do y'all have any questions thus far? Y'all have been awfully quiet because you're muted. <laughs> Anybody? Okay. All right. So, let's now get on to uh, the singing of it. All right. Marissa, can you show that diagram? I think that's what's next. So, uh, when uh, they get together to sing, it's usually in a square, as you can see, and then there's a hollow square. Do you see that? 
And so you have, of course, the trebles, the, I'm going counterclockwise, altos, basses, and tenors. And so some features of um, Sacred Harp singing, or the groups, they always sing unaccompanied. So no piano, no instruments, nothing like that. And they arrange themselves, like I said, in a square with a hollow in the end, and they'll have several rows within each section. Um, and then uh, you can mix uh, the trebles. Um, you can have mix them with men and women. And, and same thing with the tenors, which always have the, the tune. So those twos are mixed, but usually these are women and those are men, or the people who sing the women part, uh, the alto part, sorry. So, and then you have, uh, uh, this is sort of a, it's a communal kind of thing, which is there's no one single leader, you'll have a leader, but it could be someone who does it, but it could be also a singer. And they will get up there and they will line out the beat or they will also um, sing the pitch, the starting pitch to get you going. And we'll see some videos of that in a bit. So um, let's look at the first one, and this one, we had a form at St. John's a few years ago. I can't remember, I did in there, I saw Alice and Tommy, so I know it had to be probably before 2015. So Marissa, if you could show that, and Dennis Howard had wonderfully remembered it and sent it to me. So you'll see some familiar faces, but for, I think it was a summer forum where uh, we had a shape note group, and I can't remember, who that was. Uh, Sandra, do you remember who came? Nope. Well, as you can see, there, the person is in the hollow square. You can't see the square, but they're right in the center. There's also someone there, I guess, helping. So um, let's let this roll and watch this. This is at St. John's. <laughs> I saw Joan, I saw some, a few choir members. So anyway, that was sort of our foray into uh, shape note singing, sacred heart singing. So the next one is, I just got this off the internet, and this is a, a, a group in Atlanta, uh, and they talk about their experience in singing, uh, this uh, sh uh, shape note singing. Um, and the sound is very, I would call it kind of earthy and very um, driven. So it's, I wouldn't call it nuanced singing, but it's wonderful kind of singing. Um, and um, I told Adam and Sophie, it reminded me of hearing Welch folk when they sing their wonderful Welch tunes. It's just with a lot of gusto. So let's watch this little presentation. And... How much of it would you like me to play? I, I don't know, until they start to close their eyes and go to sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Not the people, but y'all. We'll see until we run out of time, okay? I've always liked it. I like unusual music, and this is unusual music. Some of our music goes back to this time of Shakespeare. Uh, it was analyzed once by a musicologist as being about 13 different styles of music. We sing them all, they're all written in the same method. The, uh, what we use, the shape note system, is an American invention. It uh, was invented about 1798 by two music teachers up in New England. And these innovative singing masters decided that they would create 
shapes on the page as well as putting notes on a staff. They created shapes to match the four syllables that the English system has always used, fa, so, la, and mi. If you look at the scale as it's printed in shape notes, it's fa, so, la, fa, so, la, mi, fa. It's not that we sing only four notes, it's that those four shapes are used to make a system that allows people to look at the shapes and then hear the tune in their heads. They are older harmonies, Renaissance harmonies, even late medieval harmonies, and they sound strange. It may be startling. There's no sense of dynamics. Everything's loud. That's, that's basically it. As shape note singing migrated down the Shenandoah Valley and into the upland south, it became very popular and was nurtured and was, was maintained by families that were committed to it, by communities that were committed to it. And the South really became a kind of a, a kind of an incubator for it. Well, my father taught me how to sing and my younger sister too. We thoroughly enjoyed it. We had a church membership, but if there was a singing somewhere, that's where we had to go. It's inspirational to me. You, you just, you feel good all over to sing it. I love it. Well, I was born into it, you might say, because my family and most of my relatives sang Sacred Heart. Since I like that kind of music, obviously I would try to compose in that style. I don't have any idea of how good it is. I, li I like it, but the singers themselves are the judges of what you write. And if they don't like it, they don't sing it. We sing out of books that are entitled The Sacred Harp, a four-shaped tune book that was first published in 1844 in Hamilton, Georgia. Going to a Sacred Harp singing is not like going to a concert because you don't listen, you participate. We have a monthly singing at Emory Presbyterian Church. And this is a good place for people who don't know anything about it to come and learn more. There are singings going on almost every weekend that can be reached within about an hour or so's drive of Atlanta. Okay, I asked, I asked Marissa to kind of uh, maybe stop it because I want to show you one more. So you get a sense of the sound. I wouldn't call it a refined sound, but it certainly is an energetic and, uh, as I said, gutsy sound. So uh, that's, um, in, of course, in Atlanta. And there is one in Tallahassee, and they, and they came uh, to our forum. But they're all over uh, the South and, um, and also all over America a lot in the South. So the next one I'm going to show you is the Association of Anglican Musicians. They had their convention this past summer and our guest presenters who are going to show up pretty soon, right Marissa? What time is it right now? It's 6.20 and they'll probably come around 6.25. Okay, so this is perfect. So um, uh, Marissa, you want to tell them about this video, where it was, and because you, you were there, right? Yeah. So the Association of Anglican Musicians is um, basically just a group of church musicians in the uh, mostly Episcopal church from all over the country um, in the United States. And uh, each year they have an annual conference, except for this year because it's been canceled. But, um, but every year, usually they do. And so last year it was in Boston and um, I was uh, really lucky to not only be able to go, but be on the planning committee for it. We had a really great week long um, conference, but it culminated at the very end, and the last day was July 4th, and um, we began our last day of the conference singing shape note songs in Old North Church, 
which many of you probably know is a, a really uh, prominent church in the Freedom Trail and the American Revolution and all this stuff. So it was a very America-driven day. And we were able to sing these, these hymns together. So it was about this video that you're about to see is about 300 church musicians heartily singing, not nuanced, as Betsy says, um, just truly letting their hair down and, and singing in this tradition. And it was a lot of fun. And you'll see that the two leaders, one on the ground floor and one on the top floor, are, as uh, Betsy mentioned, are two uh, presenters today. So it's a, it's a good transition for, for when they arrive. So I'll share that video. to have any kind of uh, questions or comments from y'all, you can unmute yourself and just sort of start chatting. David, I'm sorry you can't see any of the videos. Oh, I can see the videos. Oh, we just can't see you. You just can't see me. For some uh -huh. reason, I'm struggling with the uh, with the Wi-Fi. I'm at St. Teresa, and yeah. for some reason, the Wi-Fi is kind of in and out. But I can see the videos. I can see everything you're posting. I just, yeah. I just can't join the video. Yes. OK. So. Good. Well, what'd you think, David? I know you just love him singing, like you're the number one parishioner who just is always posting all these hymns um, on, on Facebook. Well, you know, this is fascinating. And I knew almost nothing about this, about this history. And um, it's always fascinated me. And uh, as soon as I saw that this was going to be the discussion tonight, I got really excited. So um, it's, it's just fascinating. And you're right. I love the hymns. Yes. Anybody else have any comments to offer? Don't be afraid because you're being recorded. Ms. Francis, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. I, uh, I've had a little bit of experience, but it's nothing outstanding. And I certainly don't want to interrupt something that's as good as what we've already seen. But when I was a child, I went to a hymn, you know, they had what we call singing school, no G, singing school. It was held at the courthouse and uh, my cousins went and I went with them. And then at night the adults came and they, they taught uh, the shape note singing. But I didn't remember much about that. But when I got to be a school teacher and I uh, was working with two young men that I had taught in school actually, they came to me and said, we're gonna do some shape notes singing and we want you to do that you know that harmony part and I said <laughs> okay but Betsy I really never could I knew how to read music and I could sing what the the, 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 the tune because I could I just knew alto what alto looked like you know but I never could get the the do re me and all that stuff straightened out right. and uh, I, I failed miserably and that's my story <laughs> well Francis where did you grow up where was this Oh, this was over in Holmes County, about halfway between here and Pensacola, in okay. a little town called Bay. And uh, we, we were there at Holmes County High School, and uh, Great. it was it was just fooling around, if you will. And uh, and by that time, I had I had gotten an office. I had been uh, uh, chosen to be the assistant principal, so I didn't teach so much. And mm -hmm. they would that little office, and we would sing. <laughs> But uh, I faked it. Francis, I didn't know you were an alto. How come you're not singing in St. John's Choir? Well, my husband told me. 
when I married him, he said, trust me, you don't want to be in that choir. They are, they are professional sound. No, we're not. No. Hold it. <laughs> you come to a rehearsal where we're first learning something and, and you'll think differently. But I'm glad to know that you grew up singing. That, that's great. Yeah, I, I, I love to sing. I'm not, I don't have a trained voice, but I love to sing. Yeah. Well, that, that's what it's all about, isn't it? About love of singing. So, mm. thank you. I have that. a question. Yes, Marianne. Is, is Doe always C? Well, you're, you're talking about a different kind of um, system because they don't have a Doe in this uh, four shape note. So uh, there's, you, you can have a, a movable dough or a fixed dough. And the people who are big supporters of fixed dough um, say, yes, dough is always C, but movable dough, it depends on the key. So there are just two ways of doing that. Does that make sense? Well, well yes, yes. yes. <laughs> well, you know, if you're in key of G major, and I know you know music, that, you know, uh, the tonic, which you could call dough if it's a movable dough. But for those who are into fixed dough, that means dough is always C. So in G major, the G wouldn't be a dough, but it would be a so. So, but that, that system, that's a different system. And, and eventually, um, the, the shape note, what I read was that it was four note system, and then it went to a seven note system, but I didn't do much research on that. So anyway, but thank you, Mary Ann. Anybody else? I see that Adam's in the, in here. Adam! Um, this is David. Oh, David, go ahead. David? Just a quick question. Where in our area, where in our area can we hear shape note music? Is there, and, and, and if you don't have a place that we can, that we can Google. I think there's a place that in locally, Tallahassee. That, yeah, I think there's a local group that does shape note singing. And it's not, it's not necessarily tied to a congregation because shape note singing can be congregational, but it's also kind of a social right. gathering, just gather together and just want to sing. So um, I can't remember the name of the group that we had a few years ago, but it wouldn't be hard to find uh, the groups that uh, have shape note gatherings. Okay. I'll do that Thank for you. you. Thank you. Okay. Marissa, are we ready to have to introduce Adam and Sophie? Hi, you're here. Hello. Hello. Good to have you here. We just showed him the arm um, uh, shape note singing of y'all conducting and uh, the cool. wonderful sound and everything. So they've just had a little bit of, uh, about it. And so what they're gonna do is talk more about it. And we might even do some singing. Now you'll be muted, so you don't need to worry about it. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, don't, don't fret about, you'll be in hurt, only yourself. So just think of yourself in the shower. You're all alone. <laughs> all right, y'all take it away. <laughs> Thank you, Betsy. Thank you, Marissa. It's great to be with you all. Uh, my name is Adam Simon, and this is Sophie Michaud. And we're going to talk to you. It sounds like you've already been talking a little bit about uh, sacred harp and shape note music. So we'll give you a brief introduction and uh, show you a couple examples that we have uh, recordings from YouTube. And then we'll learn a simple song together, uh, an old shape note song from the sacred harp. Um, and then we can open it up to any questions that you all have for us. So um, basically speaking, it's, it's very, very condensed, but sacred harp, uh, there, there's a lot of confusion and overlap about what sh sacred harp music is versus what shape note music is. As I just heard Betsy saying, there were four shape systems and there were seven shape systems. They kind of came in at different times. Um, the four shape system is most common in the sacred harp and various seven shape systems are still common today in the South, uh, in the primitive Baptist hymnal, um, Southern Baptist hymnals, met a few others. Um, and interestingly, actually there's more seven shape note singing in churches today than there is four shape note singing, but because the sacred harp became so popular, and the sacred harp is one particular book, became so popular recently that people are singing it in Ireland and Poland and back in New England um, and the West Coast, really all around the world. Um, so the, the, the shapes, the yeah, um, we're going to get to the, what the shapes are in, in just a second. Um, 
Um, I'll, I'll share my screen and show you a little example I have, uh, but we'll, we'll get to that in one second. Um, Sacred Harp, uh, the style of Sacred Harp singing um, started essentially in the North, in, in New England, in old New England, and it traveled down to the South. And in the South, it's where, it's where it, it stayed alive and where it was preserved. Uh, sacred Harp singing and shape note singing mostly fell out of, out of common practice in New England and pretty much everywhere except uh, pockets in Alabama and Georgia, um, Florida, and I'm not entirely sure where else, but that little area in the South. Um, and in the 1960s and 70s, it had a big uh, resurgence, a, 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 a renaissance up in New England, um, where people kind of discovered it as a roots uh, American choral singing tradition. And that being said, it is a community singing tradition. It, it's all the music is religious and it had its roots in church singing, but it's not really sung in, in services. It's sung in, um, in community singing you know, so a group will get together on a Saturday and host an all day singing where they'll get together at 10 in the morning and sing till four in the afternoon with a meal in the middle. Um, generally speaking, they're very open and welcoming uh, communities. I, I mean, I, I haven't been to a single one. I've heard of some, some very, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Exclusive communities, uh, but not, not because they don't like other people, but because they really cherish their traditions. So you'd be very hard to find a live recording of certain family sings in the South. Uh, you, have, you have to be friend, you have to know someone to get your foot in the door. Um, <laughs> uh, so anyway, uh, without much further ado, we'll get into uh, a, a specific example of four shape um, sacred harp singing. So I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen and pull up the song that we have for you today. It's called Hallelujah. I'd, if, if, it, if it's okay, I would love to just say a few things about what the shapes are. Um, I know Adam's going to go in detail, but go for it. kind of a big, something that was helpful for me, if you are comfortable with reading music, it's, you could pretty much just follow, you know, your way of reading music and be able to read shapes. It's not, um, but just the way that it was taught originally was that the shapes were some kind of um, of help for you to be able to sight read music. Um, I mean, help is the wrong word. It was a system of reading music so that it would be accessible to a lot of students in the singing schools and basically just kind of a, an aid whenever you see the shapes. Um, shape note music, eventually the shapes kind of feel like they have a particular flavor. And, and so when you see a triangle, when you see a particular shape, it kind of feels a different way. And Adam's going to describe more of the shapes. Here. Yeah, exactly. So once you get used to seeing the scale on the shapes and seeing lots of music on the shapes, it, it becomes kind of second nature and it just it becomes harder to sing without the shapes. Um, I grew up singing uh, more traditional do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do style solfege. Um, and I learned uh, four shape singing you know, a kind of a little bit later, but also at the same time. And it's not difficult at all to kind of learn two systems. Uh, it's just a matter of practice and doing it a lot. So look up, uh, can you all, uh, Betsy, can you see the screen okay? Mm -hmm. Thumbs up, yeah. right. Um, good. So yeah. right here where I have, it says this nice, also in the Sacred Harp, they always sell, tell you what key you were in. It's written nice big letters right there. Um, and so I, I love that when I came in, someone asked, is it movable or is it fixed? Uh, and it's yeah. in the Sacred Harp, it's totally movable. Um, so fa, this triangle, is always the tonic, um, it's always the one. Uh, the only thing to remember- One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, the only thing to remember is that it actually repeats in shape note music. So as Sophie was just singing, uh, let's maybe a little higher, fa. So let's say this is our key. We'll just go through the scale. Fa, sol, la. That repeats. Fa, sol, la. And then the leading tone is special. Mi, fa. Everyone try that one more time. We'll go up and down. Fa, sol, la. Fa, sol, la. Mi, fa. Beautiful. Try it backwards. Fa, mi, la. So fa la so fa. <laughs> yeah, so um, it's it's really there's a really nice logic to it because of the fa so la fa so la. Those two little three note groups have this really wonderful. Um, 
they're, they just end up being really useful, especially in, in the tunes that are common in American folk music, mostly pentatonic folk tunes, which are five note scales, um, kind of like, uh, well, the one we're going to sing is actually pentatonic. So these kind of very American jaunty sounding tunes, those are all pentatonic scales. And they really fit really nicely with these fa sol la scales. Um, you have anything to add, or we can go to well, the uh, a memo uh, a good way to think of some of these shapes. Uh, I don't know if you want to do the flag. Please. Oh yeah, sure. Um, this is just a fun little thing we like to do at workshops when we do it. Is um, you can kind of take your hands out and make these shapes. So fa is a triangle. You like can make a, a flag, like a flag, uh, like a F for flag. flag. You can make a little waving flag on your ship. Sol is a circle like the sun, big circle. La, you make two letter L's and you put them together. You get a rec, oh, make sure I don't make a diamond. That's a rectangle. <laughs> <laughs> then they repeat, fa flag, sol, la, and then diamond is the special note, that's me. And that's, as you'll see in the song we're about to sing, it's actually not very common that the me even uh, exists in a lot of these old tunes because they're so heavily in the pentatonic scale. And we'll, we'll have time for questions later if anyone has questions. Um, but in the interest of time, I think we should jump in and start. Yeah, and me is a diamond because yeah. diamonds are for me. Oh yeah, they're it's for Sophie, not me. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> Almost forgot. <laughs> so here's our little melody. I took this from the song we're going to sing. Um, I can't tell. Is that going to be in the way? Are you able to see the, whole, the can, whole score right now? Can you see the whole score? Or is my, box, is my um, Zoom box in the way? It, the it's, Zoom box is in the is way. In the way. Okay. Can just make it a smaller one. Oh, there we go. Uh, Someone, uh, Betsy, unmute and tell me if that doesn't work because I can't well, see. Well, what anything. I see is my, I'm having it on speaker view, so it's all on the, on the side, so I'm not getting the end. I'm getting the left, uh, the beginning, but not the end. Can you shrink it even more? Or can you make it smaller? Yeah, keep going. A little bit bigger now because I've got old eyes. Bigger, 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 bigger. Yeah, looking, keep going. Keep going. That's pretty good. Do is, can y'all see that pretty well? I think I'll work. Okay. okay. <laughs> Thank um, you. So yeah, so this is the this is the tenor line from the from the song. The song is called Hallelujah, and it's an old uh, song by a a uh, a guy from his name William Walker. He's a famous uh, one of the most famous uh, composers of of early Sacred Heart music. He actually was the one who published the Southern Harmony, which is kind of the precursor to Sacred to the Sacred Heart uh, volume. And this is one of his tunes that he wrote um, in, 1835. In, eight, in 1835, yeah. Um, this was republished uh, later on many times uh, because it was a very successful tune. Um, and this is the tenor line, which is in this style of music, almost always the melody. And traditionally it's sung by both men and women in both octaves, both high and low octaves. Um, so everyone can go ahead and learn this one. So using our knowledge of this little shape note scale, we have to transpose to A flat major. And as you can see, we start on five, one, which in this case, like in, like in C major, sol, fa, same thing. Sol, fa, fa, sol, la, fa, sol, la, sol, fa, la, fa, 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 sol, la, sol. Repeat. Sol, fa, fa, sol, la, fa, sol, la, sol, fa, la, fa, 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 sol, la, sol. Keep going. Great. Um, now, before we go on, I just want to reiterate, as Sophie said a, a second ago, the shapes are really about, um, they're about a learning tool for people who are learning this music. Kids would actually grow up in, in, in what's called singing schools where they'd learn how to sing like this from a, from a young age. And it was a, a learning tool. It's not really what the music is about. The music is about the community. The music is about the texts, the, the words. Um, it's not about the shapes. Uh, they, they kind of have a really exciting 
uh, role in, in the music today because it's kind of, uh, it's kind of a novel and, and odd, but, um, and, and people really do sing the music on the shapes to make sure everyone knows the song before you start the words. But if it's at all difficult for you, just sing la la la. And they'll tell you, if you go to a singing in Florida, they'll tell you the same thing. Don't sweat it the, the first time you're there. Uh, I mean, don't sweat it the second, third, fourth time you're there. <laughs> you'll, you'll catch on as, as fast or as slow as you need to. It's, it's not really about the shapes. Um, the fun thing is also is once you have two different parts singing on their own shapes, you'll hear all kinds of different shape names at the same time so you can really hide behind yeah any it, of those shapes it's very just it's, don't say do just just don't say do <laughs> and when in doubt don't say me because as you see there's no me in this tenor line <laughs> <laughs> okay um should we go to the four part one Sh uh, sure maybe we could can we just review this one one last time sure. um the cool thing about what i like about it's a fun uh a fun little melody that basically this first little section here that we have between the repeat signs. So you'll you'll hear you'll sing that twice since it's written that way. And then it just, as you might have noticed, it kind of repeats in a similar version here. So if it just helps if you're if you just if it helps learning just for our purposes right now, this uh, this first little section will be repeated at the end. And then there's that fun little um, second section, like a B section, if you will. So A, A, B, A. And the B just feels like it's this really exciting sound. Um, can we just go over this together one more time? I feel like that it's good to have a really strong tenor line mm -hmm. that should be sung. Just it feels like all your energy comes out, uh, and you can just try and uh, just try and have fun with that. So let's just sing that one more time again. La la la, if that feels easiest. One more time. And so fa fa so la fa so. now right if you notice that the that so the tenor is often um both the tenor and what you call the treble which is the soprano if you're more familiar to an s-a-t-b those are generally the most acrobatic lines they feel like you kind of go high go low <laughs> um so but if you're feeling like you want to so here is the tenor line that melody that we just learned um on the third line here and then Maybe if you're a bass, of course, you would go to the bass that mostly has men singing. And they would actually, um, in the preface of the Sacred Harp, they would kind of ask for as many basses as possible. It was a really, really thick line. So um, maybe we could just kind of go over that. Yeah, sure. That so now we've taken your training wheels off and there's no shapes spelled out for you. Um, so once again, this is not, you know, the first time you're looking at this, you should not be expected to to do it right away, but um, but just just hum along or sing la la la. But I'll just go over the bass part for anyone who's interested. The bass sings. So fa 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 so la so la so la fa la 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 so so fa. So fa 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 so la so la so la fa la 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 fa so fa fa. Fa feels like it's this fa, for example, just to give you a little bit of the color. Fa always feels like it's as the tonic, feels like a strong note. Fa, fa, but it also. Um, Ba, ba, also feels like a really strong note there. And the so feels like a strong note because it's the five, for example, or the two so 
if that's yep. confusing, just <laughs> let that go. Um, so that was for the basses. And for the altos, um, the altos have a very, uh, altos and shape note things often have a lot of, uh, use their voice really loudly. I'm an alto, I'm a mezzo-soprano, and I'm an alto in most singing. But when I sing alto and shape note, things I have a hard time keeping my voice for a long time because they sing out and you want to sing with them and so it kind of feels like the strong thing so if you want to kind of sing with that you you'll the part? yeah you'll sing so 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 la so 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 la so la 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 so 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 la so so Kind of chesty sounds not that you have to but typically it's really common to hear that strong voice in the same way that the basses often feel like bumbling along um and we'll show you some examples of that a little bit later another fun part about the alto lines is um as i mentioned earlier in the southern harmony as these tunes were first published they were only three uh voice tunes they had tenor treble or soprano and bass. So the alto lines were added later when four voice singing was more in demand. In the case of this song, I believe William Walker, the composer, actually wrote his own alto line because he was publishing his own books. But very frequently they were written by uh, whoever was publishing the book. And sometimes that rendered very strange alto parts. So a lot of the juicy, crunchy chords that you'll hear and hear about in Sacred Harp are actually from either intentionally or maybe unintentionally strange alto lines clashing with the music. In the case of this song though, the alto has just so many beautiful harmonies filled out that no one else in the group has. Um, at the very beginning of the, of the B section on and I'll sing, um, all the ah. other voices are. The alto is at the third of the chord, right? The glorious third. And then at the, at the, the middle of the second line, you'll sing hallelujah. Same thing, the altos fill in that harmony. So without the altos in this, um, in the three voice tradition, a lot of this music had this really austere open fifth sound. And it was the alto parts a lot of the times that added the color uh, that, we, that we're used to in more traditional choral music. Yay, alto! Uh, your your let's just hand, go altos. over the treble part and then we can sing through the whole song. Yeah. Do uh, you want to do the Yeah, the treble part, it, as just as the tenor part was sang both by women and women and men. So you can- And still is, yeah. And, um, and still is. And so here we go. Here's how it goes. I will sing it, I will sing it In your up octave? the octave, up the octave, but you can sing it down the octave. I'll sing a little bit of both. So it can be kind of acrobatic, but let's, here we go, and fa la 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 so la so la so la so fa fa la so fa or down the octave fa la 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 so la so la so la so fa fa la so fa fa la so fa so fa so la so fa so 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 fa so I was trying to make a point there, but of course, <laughs> choose your register, high or low, or whatever. Yeah, whatever you want. <laughs> and the more you listen to or attend shape note uh, singings, you'll hear the kind of different characters that each of the voices often has in the composition. Um, in this particular tre treble line, the soprano line, the way it constantly hits that so, fa la 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 so la so la so la so fa. It's all about this. The treble part always has this high note that they kind of belt out, and all the other notes are not super important. But when you hit that so la so la fa, you just hear them popping out. And as Sophie said earlier, the altos are all about this super heavy, present, chesty sound that's always there. The tenor line is the melody, so it's sung very lyrically and smooth throughout. And the basses are just kind of grounding everything so each voice has its own 
character that uh, contributes to a really interesting um, choral sound that's that's really unique because it's not about blend in the same way. Um, and a fun a fun way um, you might have seen or talked about this, but it's often uh, conducted. So you sing it in a square, uh, facing each other, so you can really hear all the harmonies. And uh, there's someone in the middle who's calling, uh, who decides which song they'll want to lead. And it changes. You just decide, oh, th I want to sing 146. I want to sing 332. Uh, and you decide the leader, the caller, calls the song, stands in the middle, conducts. And there's something really, um, uh, what is the word that I, like, the, the visceral. physical visceral about the idea of conducting at the same time so that you kind of feel the whole music yeah. with your whole and body. Ev everyone in the room is is encouraged to conduct beat beat time along um so this one in six eight would have two beats a measure up down and up down up down up down simple like that and with that it kind of <laughs> feels like your energy feels like it goes on the strong beats and then less and yeah. less strong then you want to you want to sing and live into the those accents whereas in a lot of classical choir music you would work as hard as you can to avoid over accenting the obvious accents but here you're 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 doing you're really giving oomph to those strong beats. And that's what's um, yeah. <laughs> Why don't we sing <laughs> through a sing couple the whole, whole verses of the song, and then we'll open it up to some questions you have. Um, maybe, maybe just one and three. Is sure. That, um, is that worth doing? So that I everyone gets a little. Is really nice. Though. Okay. Can we do one and four? One and four. Verse one and verse four. So notice that each little verse has a repeat. So and let, and then my soul shall, and then we'll jump right to verse four. Give joy or grief but let me find so um and, and we'll, the chorus the chorus and then we'll repeat the chorus on the on the fourth verse just because it's so great so here we go hang in there sing wrong notes sing wrong words let's just have fun with this and <laughs> bass tenor altos and trebles and let we do do we do no just words yeah <laughs> and let this feeble body Great job. singing. We could hear you. That was, it was great. <laughs> I, do, I did not know that one. That's a wonderful tune. It was fantastic. Such a song. Such a Thank you so much for doing that. Our, All right, everybody, unmute. Show them that you're not shy in the South, right? <laughs> I know Roger Ponder might have a question or two. Where's Roger? We were planning on being a little, um, a little more concerned. Am I unmuted? So much to say. You're unmuted. You're, yes. you're unfettered. You're unchained. Go for it. Your, your husband said one time about playing handbells that he had 
several degrees in music and years of experience, and yet playing handbells just totally defeated him. I feel a little <laughs> bit like that. <laughs> the, the I can't remember the shapes of the notes of what I'm supposed to say. So. <laughs> It's okay. It's it is time. okay. Yeah. Or I don't know if it's the first time, but it's okay. It's just for the fun of it. Yeah, well, I can, I can sight read music, but, and Randolph is sitting over there saying, oh, I'm going to show you how later. And I'm like, la, 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 where's the line? Where am I supposed to be? I mean, really? I, I think I get an F. <laughs> I think it's about the sound and the music. It just like uh, Sophie and Adam said, just doesn't matter. Just kind of throw your whole body and soul into it. I mean, I was messing up. I mean, I don't know about it, but I, you know, we were on mute. Nobody cares. So just <laughs> to me, I just I like the sound. And the fun thing of it is that I'm I'm not a particular religious. I'm not very religious, but when I sing these words all of a sudden it's just seeing these words with abandon mm -hmm. uh just makes me believe like like very few other music uh, yeah <laughs> we were talking earlier about the words they're kind of uh, if you did you get a chance to really look at the words everybody <laughs> <laughs> i mean but it's you know and I think it's appropriate for the, well, we don't have it anymore on the screen, but appropriate for what we're going to when things are, of course, we're not dying. Well, excuse me, some are, but how things are just kind of in despair, but there's always joy, you know, at the end. And it's good to see something like this now to remind us that uh, this, where we are right now is not the end. So I like that. Any other comments? Well, well, so you've got to, you got to see us sing, even if you didn't get to hear us sing. No. <laughs> <laughs> it was beautiful. Uh, when you try to sing with everybody unmuted, it it's just doesn't work on Zoom at all. It, no. Yeah. Not yet. But yeah. they're working on finding solutions to make it work. So. Are y'all? What are y'all doing? Your. Uh, Adam. Uh -huh. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. Oh, there you go. What, you're working on solutions? I thought it was Oh, just... uh, we're, we're, we're not, um, but the, the technology is, oh. is, is advancing quickly because of the need to reduce the, uh, the latency, the lag. Um, it, it certainly won't be available for everyone. It, you, I think you'll need very fast internet to make it work, but, uh, mm -hmm. but I would expect in a couple of months you'll, you'll start seeing some actual live, uh, relatively live music happening on, on these types of platforms. Um, yeah. Great. Yes. Good. Well, does anybody have any questions? They made it so welcoming, didn't they? You can unmute well, you, yourself. You'll see if you if you do go to a Sacred Harp singing. Uh, um, I'm sure there are tons in Florida. I, I I'm sure if you just Google Sacred Harp <laughs> singing Florida, you'll find them. <laughs> um, uh, I can also send Marissa some links that I that I have to a, a, a website that yeah. is a it's called fasola.org and it's kind of a big community website for the whole right. world community. Um, so, and you'll see when you, when you show up there, they're, they're very welcoming uh, and it's a lot of fun. So there's also a website um, that was because the sacred harp tradition has kind of taken off in a lot of different places since the seventies. There are a lot of places in Ireland and Germany where people are really excited about it. And there's this fantastic website uh, that was started in Bremen in Germany. Uh, I actually met the person who, who started it, but basically put the whole hymnal, the whole sacred harp online. And that every, uh, every piece you can, you know, select by title, by number, and every hymn has every song uh, tune has every part sung individually, then you can play them all at the same time. So if you just want to, practice any one of them uh i think it's a really fun resource it's called sacred harp bremen um very easy to look for i can also send it, okay. it would be good i have a question um what is the difference between and i know there isn't a difference between shape note singing and sacred harp singing and yet you marissa art not marissa i'm sorry i forgot your name you refer to when you're singing this in the presence of Sacred Heart. What does that mean? Um, good, good question. Uh, so 
shape note singing, uh, unfortunately, has kind of taken on this multifaceted meaning. It doesn't mean anything other than the notes on the page are not all circles. There are lots of different systems, um, like the four shape one we just looked at. There's also the seven shape system that is still common in the South. Um, but really, shape note singing only means the notes are different shapes. Um, those are the two common ones that I know about. Um, and sacred harp singing means singing from this book exclusively. It just so happens that this book has become incredibly popular. Um, and a lot of people uh, who hear about this style of singing will use the two terms interchangeably. If you go to a sacred harp singing where they sing from this book, they will not call it shape note singing. That It actually kind of annoys them. Um, <laughs> but I'm flexible and I, I do sometimes use the words interchangeably too. But here's another book, for example, Shenandoah Harmony, who also, that also has... The shapes, yeah. The shapes. <laughs> yeah. well, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's good to know. Well, I think it's time for our class to be over. Let's just give a big thumbs up or applause to <laughs> Adam and Sophie. It was wonderful. Thank you very much. Thanks wonderful for having us. Wonderful seeing everyone. It was yeah. great. So um, stay safe in Boston. And thank I hope you. one day to meet you in person. And who knows, I'm going to do all kinds of music. We might have you back for another kind of presentation, if you're willing. <laughs> really We'd love fun. it. Sure, yeah. this is fun. Okay. Yeah. And thank you, Marissa, for putting them together and connecting us to them. So yep. take care. Thank you so right. much. Bye, y'all. Thank you. Okay, thank you. see y'all next care. week.